in this lecture we will discuss the what is the degeneracy in transportation problem and also discuss the one example problem how to resolve the transportation problem if the degeneracy occurs first we will see the what is the degeneracy in a transportation problem if the number of non negative independent allocations is less than m plus n minus 1 then there is exist a degeneracy here m equal to the number of origins or number of rows n equal to the number of destinations or number of columns this degeneracy may occur either at the initial stage or at a subsequent iteration to resolve this degeneracy we have to adopt the following steps first one is among the empty cells we have to choose an empty cell having the least cost which is an independent position if such a cells are more than one we have to choose the randomly second step is to this to this cell as chosen in the step 1 we allocate a small positive quantity that is epsilon which is greater than the zero the cells contain epsilon are treated like other occupied cells and degeneracy is removed by adding one more accordingly for this modified solution we have to adopt the steps involved in modi method till an optimum solution is obtained so let's see the one example problem solve the optimum solution to the given transportation problem here number of sources three sources s1 s2 and s3 and the destinations number of destinations are the d1 d2 d3 three destinations and also given the supply at the each sources and also given the demand at the each destination let's see the solution first we have to check the whether given transportation problem is balanced or not so first we have here we have to check the total supply and the total demand total supply equal to the 10 plus 15 plus 40 that is the 65 and total demand equal to the 20 plus 15 plus 30 equal to the 65 so here demand equal to the supply then the given transportation problem is balanced so first step in the optimal solution by modi method is find the initial basic feasible solution of a transportation problem by using the any of the three methods here we are applying the northwest corner rule method to find the initial basic feasible solution so this is the procedure for the to find the initial basic feasible solution by northwest corner method in the previous lectures we already discuss then here let's solve it so this is the initial basic basic feasible solution by the northwest corner rule method here number of allocations are the five allocations which is equal to the m plus n minus 1 here m equal to the number of rows and n equal to the number of columns here m value is the 3 and n value also 3 so m plus n minus 1 equal to the 5 and also all these cell allocations are independent so which is not forming a closed loop then we get the solution is the not non degenerate and transportation cost equal to the 2 into 10 plus 4 into 10 plus 1 into 5 plus 3 into 10 plus 1 into 30 which is equal to the 125 let's see the second step is find the set numbers ui and vj for each row and the column which is satisfying the ui plus vj equal to the cij for each occupied cell then we determine the ui for the rows 
vj for the columns here three rows are there so u1 u2 u3 for the rows and three columns are there so v1 v2 and v3 for the columns next observe the number of allocations for the each row and the column next we have to check the maximum allocations for the rows or columns here u2 u3 and v1 v2 are having the maximum allocations that is the 2 then we have to select the randomly any one among these rows and columns and we have to assign the zero value here v1 is selecting and assigning the value is the zero then we have to solve the d1 column which is having the two allocations then we have to solve these two cells which is satisfying the ui plus vj equal to the cij first we have to solve the s1 row and the d1 column relation is u1 plus v1 equal to the c11 here c11 value is the 2 and u1 plus v1 will, will become the 2 and we are assigning the v1 value is the 0 then u1 will become the 2 so assign the u1 value is the 2 so next we have to solve the s2 row and the d1 column relation is the u2 plus v1 equal to the c21 c21 value equal to the 4 and v1 value is the 0 then u2 equal to the 4 next to solve the s2 row and the d2 column relation is the u2 plus v2 equal to the c22 here c22 value is the 1 then u2 value is the 4 then 4 plus v2 equal to the 1 and the v2 value equal to the minus 3 next we have to solve the s3 row and the d2 column relation is the u3 plus v2 equal to c32 here c32 value is the 3 and v2 value is the minus 3 then u3 value will become the 6 next we have to solve the s3 row and the d3 column sorry here d3 d3 column relation is the u3 plus v3 equal to the c33 c33 value is the 1 and u3 value is the 6 then v3 will become the minus 5 next step is find the net evolution value for each empty cell here observe the non occupied cells we have to determine the delta value relation is we have to use delta ij equal to the cij minus ui plus vj first we have to look for the s1 row or the d2 column that is the delta 1 2 delta 1 2 equal to the c12 minus of u1 plus v2 here substitute the c12 value 2 and u1 value is the 2 and u2 value sir v2 value is the minus 3 then we will get the delta 1 2 value is the 3 next we have to look for the s1 row and the d3 column here substitute the all c values and the v values we will get the delta 1 3 value is the 6 next to empty cell is the 2 3 that is the s2 row and the d3 column so we have to use the relationship c23 minus of u2 plus v3 c23 value is the 2 u2 value is the 4 and v3 value is the minus 5 then substitute we will get the delta 2 3 value is the 3 similarly we have to find the for the s3 row and the d1 column that is delta 3 1 here c31 value is the 1 and the u3 value is the 6 v1 value is the 0 
substitute all values we will get the delta 3 1 value is the minus 5. So next to fourth step is we have to observe the delta values. If all the delta values are greater than the 0 then solution is optimum and a unique solution exists. If the all delta values greater than or equal to the 0 then solution is optimum but alternative solution also exists. If at least one delta ij is less than the 0 then solution is not optimum then I have to go for the next step. Here observe the delta 3 1 value is the negative value. Then in this step 4 third condition is satisfying. So delta ij is less than 0 then solution is not optimum then I have to go for the next step. So fifth step is if at least one delta ij is less than 0 then I have to choose the most negative value. So here we are getting the only one delta value only negative then I have to select the respected delta that is the delta 3 2 value. Here delta 3 1 is the negative value. So select the S3 row and D1 column cell and allocate the value is the plus x. Then draw a closed path from this cell and assign plus x and minus x assign alternately at each allocated. So this is the closed loop. Here we have to allocate the plus x and minus x at to each allocation alternately. Next we have to find out the x values. For this we have to check the minus x positions in the closed path. Here we will get the minus x positions are the 10 minus x and also 10 minus x. Then we have to minimize. So minimize of the 10 minus x equal to the 0. Then we will get the x value equal to the 0. Then we have to substitute this x value at the closed loop path allocated cell. Then we will get the new allocations. So new table gives the modified allocations. Here number of allocations are the 4 only which is less than the m plus n minus 1. By substituting the x value in the closed path we get two occupied cells that is the S2 row and the D1 column and S3 row and D2 column that become the empty and the cell S3 row and D1 column is occupied which makes result A degenerate solution. Next we have to see the how to solve the degeneracy in transportation problem. Among the empty cells we have to choose an empty cell having the least cost which is an independent position. If such cells are more than one we have to choose the any randomly. Here observe the 5 empty cells are there. Among these 5 empty cells least cost cells are the so S1 row and the D2 column and S2 row and the D3 column. So among these two we have to choose the any one randomly. Here I am selecting the S1 row and the D2 column. Then we have to allocate the epsilon value at the selected cell. So have to here have to allocate the epsilon value. Then we get the degeneracy and to resolve it we have to add the empty cells that is here I am selected the S1 row and the D2 column and allocate the epsilon value. So which is considering the greater than the 0. Next we determine the set numbers u1, u2, u3 for the rows and v1, v2, v3 for the columns by using the relation ui plus vj equal to the cij. First we have to check the number of allocations for the rows and the columns. Here maximum allocations are the 2 for the u1, u3 rows and v1, v2 columns. Let us consider maximum allocation set number is 0. Here randomly we are selecting the among the maximum allocations of the u1, u3, v1, v2 is u1. Randomly selecting the u1 and its value is the 0. So next we have to determining the remaining set values by using the 
relation of u i plus v j equal to the c i j. So, these are the set numbers for the rows and the columns. Next, we have to find the net evolution value for each empty cell by using the relation of delta i j equal to the c i j minus of u 1 plus sorry u i plus v j. Here empty cells are the four empty cells are there that is the s 1 row and d 3 column 1 and second one is the s 2 row and the d 1 column and third one is the s 2 row and d 3 column and fourth one is the s 3 row and d 2 column. So, first we have to determine the delta value for the S1 row and D3 column that is the delta 1 3. So, which is equal to the C 1 3 minus of U 1 plus V 3. The value will become the 6. Similarly, next we have to determine the delta 2 1 S 2 row and the D 1 column. Here substitute the C 2 1 value and U 2 value and V 1 value. Then we will get the delta 2 1 value is the 3. Next we have to determine the delta 2 3. S2 row and D3 column that is the C23 minus of U2 plus V3. Substitute all the C23 value and U2 value and V3 value we will get the delta 23 is the 1. Next we determine the delta 32 S3 row and D2 column value will become the 2. Here observe the all delta values are the greater than 0 then solution is R. So, if all delta ij is greater than 0, then solution is optimum and a unique solution is exist. So, then the transportation cost equal to the 2 into 10 plus 2 into epsilon plus 1 into 15 plus and 1 into 10 plus and 1 into 30. So, that value will become the 75 plus 2 epsilon. Here epsilon value is the very small one, then have to neglect this epsilon value then transportation cost is the 75 rupees. So, this is the solution and thank you.